So now we are coming to our third scenario that is excess sodium chloride intake. So excess sodium in case of excess sodium chloride intake, excess sodium chloride will occur in the extracellular fluid and the osmolarity of extracellular fluid will increase. All right osmolarity will increase these osmolar this increase in osmolarity will lead to shift of fluid from intracellular fluid to extracellular fluid until the osmolarity of both solutions become equal so shift occurs until the osmolarity becomes equal So now the osmolarity of the two solutions has become equal. So now we will see what has happened. So the volume of extracellular fluid has increased after the shift and the volume of intracellular fluid has decreased. The osmolarity of intracellular fluid has also increased along with the osmolarity of extracellular fluid. And regarding the packed cell volume of met and metrophyte, as the volume of extracellular fluid has increased, so RBCs are now less concentrated, so hematocrit will increase. As why hematocrit will decrease, sorry, decrease as the volume of extracellular fluid has increased. If you want to see the pack, uh, the, uh, the effect of ICF, and uh, the X, IC represents the X, so X has also decreased. This change is not very significant, but it is. it will be significant in our coming scenarios. So X has also decreased, and it will lead to decrease in hematocrit. Both of these changes, increase in ECF and decrease in ICF, will lead to decrease in hematocrit. Now coming to our fourth scenario, that is sweating in a desert. So in case of sweating, usually salt as well as um, water, both are lost, but the volume of water lost is much greater than the volume of salt lost. Therefore, we will consider that in sweating, loss of water will occur. So the solutes will remain inside, that is these osmotically active particles will remain inside and water will be lost. So some water has been lost and it has led to increased osmolarity in extracellular fluid. So osmolarity of extracellular fluid has increased. So now as this is hyperosmotic compared to intracellular fluid, so water will shift from intracellular fluid into the extracellular fluid until the osmolarity of the two solutions become equal. So water will shift until the two solutions become isoosmotic. So now we see that the, the osmolarity of the two solutions has become equal. All right. So now let's see what has happened. So volume of intracellular fluid has decreased. And osmolarity of intracellular fluid has increased and it has become more concentrated. So osmolarity has increased. And volume of extracellular fluid has also decreased and its osmolarity has increased. So regarding the hematocrit, now this is a bit tricky. Now as the volume of extracellular fluid has decreased, we would expect the hematocrit to increase but it will not because as we see that the volume of ECF has extracellular fluid has decreased Y has decreased but the volume of intracellular fluid this is the volume which is also inside RBCs has also decreased so it has decreased the size of X the size of packed cell volume as well so both have decreased X and Y both have decreased and resulting in a constant hematocrit so hematocrit does not change though we expect it to change but it does not change in case of excessive sweating 
Now we will discuss our fifth scenario that is syndrome of inappropriate ADH, SIADH. As ADH antidiuretic hormone concentrates the urine and retains water, so in case of inappropriately large amount of ADH, excess water will be retained in the extracellular fluid. So in our extracellular fluid, excess water will enter like this. So the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid will decrease and the volume will increase. So osmolarity has decreased and volume of extracellular fluid has increased. So decrease in osmolarity in extracellular fluid compared to the intracellular fluid will lead to shift of water from the intracellular from the extracellular fluid into the intracellular fluid. So shift will occur from extracellular fluid into the intracellular fluid until the osmolarity of the two solutions become equal. So this shift has occurred and osmolarity of the two solutions has become equal. So now what has happened is that now this intracellular fluid has also become a bit of diluted. So osmolarity of intracellular fluid has also decreased and its volume has also increased just like the extracellular fluid. So now regarding the plasma protein concentration as the volume of extracellular fluid has increased so plasma protein concentration will decrease. And regarding the hematocrit as the volume of extracellular fluid has increased we usually think that the hematocrit will uh, hematocrit will decrease but hematocrit does not decrease in this scenario as well because although the volume of extracellular fluid has increased the volume of the packed cell has also increased because the volume of intracellular fluid has increased with the same ratio so the ratio of x by y that is hematocrit is constant so hematocrit is constant because both x and y have increased so hematocrit will not change hematocrit is constant but plasma protein concentration will decrease because the size of plasma proteins do not change so coming to our last scenario that is adrenocortical insufficiency so adrenal cortex produces aldosterone which is a hormone which results in reabsorption of sodium chloride. So if there is adrenocortical insufficiency, sodium chloride will not be reabsorbed and will be lost in urine. So sodium chloride will be lost from extracellular fluid resulting in decrease in osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. So osmolarity of extracellular fluid will decrease and it will lead to a shift of fluid from the hypoosmolar extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid. So water will shift from ECF to ICF until the osmolarity of the two solutions become equal. So now the osmolarity of the two solutions has become equal and they have become isoosmotic. So now let's see what has happened. So now volume of extracellular fluid has decreased. The volume of intracellular fluid has increased resulting in decrease in osmolarity of the intracellular fluid. Regarding the um, plasma protein concentration, the plasma protein concentration of extracellular fluid will increase as its volume has decreased. But regarding the hematocrit, let's see what has happened. The volume of extracellular fluid has decreased. So Y has decreased a lot and volume of intracellular fluid has increased. So hematocrit will increase because hematocrit is equal to x divided by y, y has decreased and x has increased. So it will lead to an increase in hematocrit. 
So that's it. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you.